known him since 1999, uh, and I have a very close relationship with him. That, of course, is Rex Tillerson, Donald Trump's pick for Secretary of State, talking about his good buddy Vladimir Putin. And here's Tillerson enjoying a champagne toast with Putin after the Russian president awarded him with an honor called the Order of Friendship. Tillerson's close ties to Russia is causing a ton of concern in some circles. Trump's pick for National Security Advisor Michael Flynn also has a history with Russia. He's given a paid speech uh, at a party for the Russian state television, RT. Top Putin advisor told Bloomberg News, quote, This is a fantastic team. These are people that Russia can do business with. This is not happening in a vacuum. It's coming on while Russia is flexing its muscles in Syria, working with the government to fight rebels, and while U.S. intelligence agencies are saying Russia was behind the hack attack intended to impact our presidential election. Joining us now is Matthew Schmidt. He's an assistant professor at the University of New Haven in Connecticut. Professor Schmidt, he has studied and lived in Russia, and he's taught military operations, planning, and political science at the U.S. Army School of Advanced Military Studies, and he even served as as a minder in the, the elections in Ukraine. Thanks as always for coming. I appreciate it. Um, your head's got to be exploding here. In so many ways, <laughs> yes. Well, give, I mean, before we even get to the hacking, the choices and the names, I'd even bring up Manafort, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah. that, that's the top of the list. Um, just how interwoven the relations are and explain to the folks who don't know who the oligarchs are, who pulls the strings and just how scary this is. To me, uh, the story goes back to the 1990s, and, and this is a story that the press hasn't picked up on yet. Donald Trump's casino empire went bankrupt in 92. He suddenly has the money to do an IPO in 95. The question is, is where did that money come from between 92 and 95? The Soviet Union collapsed in 92. And what you see is that a bunch of Russian money came into New York, billions of dollars, a lot of it th um, through a banker by the name of Edmund Safra and his Bank of New York and mm -hmm. the Republic Bank of New York. And the FBI was engaged in the largest money laundering case ever in their history, still to this day. And I want to see if any of that money ended up in Trump's casinos. I, we know, right, right? His son has admitted that most of the money came somewhere from Russia. I want to see who. I want to see who those investors are. Trump says, hey, he's got no investments in Russia. I don't care. I want to see how many investments Russia has in him. Fast forward from the 90s to now, the, the choices of people curious but the one commonality it has is friends with Russia friends what's what why do you think that Putin would have gone to the lens he reportedly has if you believe the intelligence reports through the Kremlin and obviously let's remember his background in the KGB to, to impact our election here is it dislike of Hillary Clinton and her policies or is it more love of Trump and by the way, I should extend this to not just Hillary, but also the Democratic Party with what we saw with the DNC. So first I'd say Putin is a smart guy with the KGB, and he has an interest in destabilizing elections just to be able to destabilize them, to sow kind of a sense of not, not letting people know, his adversaries know what's going on. So he's not just doing that in our election, he's doing that in, in the German elections, he's all over Europe in the elections that we've seen there, and those stories are just now starting to come out. But I think here, What's interesting is that if you, if you look at those intelligence reports, which, which we can't yet, we haven't seen, but what we're hearing is something's flipped and Putin has decided to pick the winner, which I think is different from what's been going on. Um, listen, uh, I, I was very critical last night, and certainly not alone, and I don't want to relitigate it, but the, the tragedy to, to what you could even call a Holocaust, it's going on in Syria right now, the fingerprints are there, not just from Assad, obviously, but from Russian support, even Iranian support, and the rest. Uh, and I hold President Obama here responsible in many ways for having a red line that he never enforced. Be that as it may, what is the end game for what Putin hopes for? We've already seen advancement in Eastern Europe. We've had you on many times. You were there on the ground, literally, mm -hmm. uh, in Ukraine, Crimea. But if he believes that he's got a friend in Washington that will let him basically do what he's going to do and police where he wants to police, where does he see expanding his foothold and his financial interests? 
in Syria, he wants to pick Assad's successor. He wants to be in control of Assad staying there for as long as he wants him there, and then with Iran, picks a successor. That's, that's going to happen now. In Ukraine, he doesn't want to own Ukraine. If he has to invade Kiev, he's lost the war there. What he wants to do is destabilize the, the political situation there, uh, crash the government, and install his own man. He's well on his way to doing that. Although the Ukrainians are very smart, they know that how this game is played, and they're, they're pushing back hard. But they can't do it without U.S. support. So if Trump comes into the White House and pulls back that U.S. support, then I would look to see uh, things get bad in Ukraine. Sanctions. Um, how much have they hurt um, Russia? Uh, how much, if they're lifted, does it help them? They've hurt Russia enough that Trump's uh, nominee for Secretary of State, Tillerson, has complained about it. Um, if he lifts those sanctions, it helps a lot of the people around his inner circle. It doesn't particularly affect Putin as far as we know because his money is well hidden. Okay, speaking of Tillerson, to get huge contracts, and again, we're talking Exxon, so it's not like some guy is going to pay a yellow manila envelope under the table to get some salt mine open. Okay, it is Exxon, but nonetheless, to get the drilling rights that he got and everything else, how does that work in Russia with the oligarchs? Well... Money exchanges hands, um, right? We have the Corrupt uh, Practices Act for, for businesses that work overseas, but a company like Exxon understands how to, how to do that, how to operate, and that's the way it works in, uh, in Russia. And so th there were payments to the right people to get those contracts through to grease the wheels. Let me pivot to the hacking. Um, all intelligence reports, uh, there seems to be growing consensus here that not only were the Russians involved, not some 400-pound guy in a basement in Jersey, okay, um, <laughs> but they were involved and it reached the highest levels of government, okay? From what you know, um, does that jibe um, with how the intelligence and the hacking operations there work? And what to me the biggest smoking gun could be there reportedly was, if you believe the foreign minister, there was uh, conversations with, you know, Russians and Trump during the campaign. They said they also talked to the Clinton campaign. We don't know yet the extent of it. Would it shock you? No. The, first of all, the, the intelligence agencies and the White House need to decide if they're going to release uh, these intelligence reports. Uh, we, we don't actually know what's in them. We only know what sources have been leaking out. But assuming what they say is correct, that those leaks are accurate, then it jives with what would happen because the scope of the operation to influence the, uh, the U.S. election was so high that it would have to go up to Putin. So that doesn't surprise me uh, in the least. And, and Putin's a control freak, so he would, he would want to know what's going on. For me, and then I'll let you guys jump in, the thing that should get everybody pause is Putin's an equal opportunist here. I, if anybody thinks, and you have a far better knowledge of it than me, if I'm Trump, the idea that you've got an ally that's going to work and do whatever, until it's not convenient, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if he'll hack, if he'll hack the DNC, he'll hack if he wants to the RNC, or he'll hack Trump, or he probably maybe even has information. I mean, to me, the sinking suspicion is there's been no political upside for the last year for Trump to defend Putin at every turn. I can say, even though I think I disagree with so much of it, there's been some political genius that he has managed to do here on a shoestring throughout the whole campaign that we're all wrong about, okay? So I'll admit I've underestimated his political instincts, but there's been no value to defending Putin at every turn or to, to defend him even in hacking a U.S. election. The only thing, and I don't wear a tinfoil hat, is something's going on where there's some kind of an arrangement. That's why I want to see where the money went in the 90s. Uh, all of those friendships that we're talking about, those were forged in the 90s when Russia was the Wild East, when it was the wildcat place for places like Tillerson to go and make serious money, um, where, where, where the Russian oligarchs were, were stripping the Soviet state of assets and rapidly investing it in the U.S. where it was safe and it could grow because there was no meaningful market I, I, for I, it. I just got to say, I got to take a little bit of issue, mm -hmm. and I, and I sure. respect your, your background, but with, with putting charges like that out on Tillerson, there's nothing, you know, so, you know, he graced the right hands, he, he, things in the 90s. Like, there's no documentation of that. There is no chance that deals that big are made in Russia without that exchange. That's the way the system works. It's an oligarchy. It's not a, it's not a rule that, of law that, state. But that, that can't be said as a blanket statement against an executive. It, it, it can't be said. I, 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 I understand know that the Ukraine and Russia are prior to being the Secretary of State. I understand right. but this. That's, but you're, you're alleging that he's, he's creating, a, I, he, I, he committed U.S. crimes. I, I am alleging that any businessman in Russia that was doing deals at that level 
is passing money around because the system is an oligarchy. It's but not you, a rule of law state. Contracts that, are not enforced. You specifically said that Tillerson was moving money around in the 90s and that no, he I'm must sorry, have I'm sorry, that was a misunderstanding. Money is moving around in the 90s. What's happening is that the people who, who are today the oligarchs are stripping the Soviet state of assets and moving that cash into Western markets in order to secure it and to launder it. This we know. I, I don't doubt it. Right? I just took issue with and, the and Tillerson. So, and and so question him in the, in the right. Senate confirmation process. But those, oh, sure. I think those are strong words. I just, in, in, in with all due respect. To that, it, whatever one else one thinks of Putin and his shortcomings, which are manifest, he's also a politician. And I'm willing to predict, just as we can use this on the on newsbreakers, that by the 1st of February, there'll be a semi-resolution of the conflict in Syria. Yeah. And that that will be Trump's first major foreign policy success. And it will With be... With a backdrop, Richard, of in living color um, images of body, uh, literally buildings full of dead people, including a, women and children. So I don't know that'll be considered a, a foreign fire, policy success when the blood is on Putin's hands. A hand. ceasefire and... A, um, an ability to provide civilian aid, if it happens. Mass genocide of children well, no, no, and women no, no, will no. be I'm with against, that guy, though. I'm against it. Right. But right? with that but, guy, but that's the, a success? The, the, the success will be, I've been president 10 days, and the armed conflict in Syria has... I've heard the theory. Right. It's the same kind of thing of the hostages. Reagan comes in and they come home. I get it. But in this particular case, there's too much blood, I think, to just wash it we'll away. We'll see. You want to say something, Andrew? I'm sorry. Uh, well, I don't know if we have enough time. Go ahead. It. You mentioned... Putin wants to extend his influence in Syria and, and uh, Ukraine. Why? What does he get out of doing that? Putin is establishing himself as the anti-American leader, the, the leader of the anti-American, anti-Western world. And so he is, he is seeking to project power into Syria and, and mark that. The, the truth is, is that Syria has relatively little strategic value to him, but it has enormous symbolic value. Putin disagreed with the Western move to, to move into Libya and, and to, to regime change, commit regime change on Gaddafi. He disagrees with regime change in Iraq. He is pushing against the concept of regime change. Why? Because he will go up for re-election in two years, and this will be ostensibly his last term, a six-year term. He'll, he'll leave at 72, 73, 74 years old, right? He's trying to establish his legacy right now. And in order to do that, he has to push back against the West, which may well try to come in through Ukraine, stoking this revolution in Ukraine, to topple the oligarchic system in Russia. And I got to hit it. We could keep going on this forever, yeah. Matt. That's a great job. And just so everybody knows, if you want to, if we all laugh about how they treat the press and everything, look at how they treat the press in Russia. Consider that. And people ask tough questions where they end up finding them. Yeah, not so funny then. Anyway, Amen. great job. Thank you. All right, we will take a look locally at how Andrew Cuomo is making a huge push to burnish his legacy and also why he got into a screaming match with Senate Republican leader John Flanagan. That and more after this.